so maybe we could go into what an actual kind of session looks like, uh, you know, how, cause you, your role is as a kind of therapy, lead therapist, right? In these sessions, actually kind of guiding people through them. Yeah. Um, so um, the day before the participant will come and have lunch with us. Well, no, they will have a brain scan um, in the morning and, they, and lots of bloods and tests and questions all the science stuff will be asked but not by me and then they will have lunch with me and the and the co-guide um, and then we will talk about their intentions for the experience and we encourage them sometimes to bring in objects to um, symbolize their intentions and um, we talk about um, taboo subjects you know what's the worst thing that you might you think might happen what's their relationship to death to sex to those kind of things so that all those things are out in the open rather than um they're kind of sitting there feeling you know this intense thing is happening and i can't share it so in a way it's just about building the trust and building the rapport um and then we talk about a little bit about what to expect you know um from the experience and a lot of it is really about fostering an attitude of curiosity and bravery so that we're, we're encouraging the person to um, go into their pain, to not avoid it. So, um, you know, depending on what kind of experience they have, it's like whatever arises is useful and interesting. Just be curious about it. And if it's nothing's happening or you're stuck, then stay with that, you know, um, and explore that. It's all, it's all grist for the mill, as it were. So we kind of do a lot of preparing of what to expect. And then we do a prep visualization, um, which um, Ros Watts has written as part of her ACE therapy model. Um, and that's, so the participant will lie on the bed and we'll have a sense then of what it's like to have the two guides next to them. And I will read a very lengthy visualization, which is all about sort of going into your body, feeling the tensions in your body, staying staying with those tensions seeing um if they shift or if there's anything happening there or what feelings can be associated with those tensions um and and the analogy is very much diving for so you may have these beautiful experiences um which you know the psychedelics can can happen in psychedelics but also there might be a darker murkier mistier um part of the psychedelic where we use the analogy of diving for spiky oyster shells. So, you know, it's being curious about them, prizing them open, and which is a bit like the analogy of the, your pain, staying with your pain to see what, 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 what you might find. And if you prize open an oyster shell, you might get a pearl, and the pearl can be, you know, that insight or that wisdom um, that they gain from the experience. So that prep visualization, I think, helps them have a sense of, I suppose diving into their internal world, diving into their psyche, noticing what's happening in their body, going towards their pain or whatever experience happens. I suppose it's fostering surrender and trust really and, and kind of feeling what it's like to have us by their side looking after them. So after that, then they come back the next day um, relatively early. We encourage them to have quite a light breakfast and by about we, we check in with them see how they're doing you know they might be quite nervous we have some art books to look at to kind kind of try and take them away from their mind and, and kind of just kind of into art and then we once they're ready we give them the psilocybin capsules so five capsules um, because they have to be synthesized and then it willing encourage them to put them as into experience happens so kind of anchoring them and hopefully um helping them to feel um, safe. Um, and then we kind of kind of sit, sit back and, you know, once they pull their hands away and um, we check in with them, say, every 40 minutes, unless they look distressed or though they're having a difficult time, you know, we just ask them to let us know what's happening and maybe we can breathe with them or, or we can kind of, you know, if they need to talk to us, then they can do that. But we very much try to foster this internal experience for them and we're like their cabin crew we're there to make them feel comfortable and to feel safe but if they feel like you know um they need us then we can we can be alongside them and you know give them water or wh whatever it is they need and then i suppose after about two or three hours um 
the psilocybin will wear off and they may come out and want to share a little bit with us but often we encourage them to to go back in and to because on the descent you know it can be useful as well to to keep working with the medicine and think sure if you want to speak to us you can but it might be really useful to just you know take what you've got there and go back in with it and see see where it takes you and then um yeah so then they often stay over the night at the research facility we have some rooms across the road and then the next day we'll come in and we'll spend an hour and a half with them two hours sort of talking about the experience kind of giving them this the space to to download and trying to keep it as open as possible so that um you know the meanings aren't settled on too too quickly it's just sort of creating that space for them to talk about their experience and then we will check check in with them like a week a week after um just to see how they're doing as well and then your role as the guide then it sounds is it's even though it might be called psychedelic assisted psychotherapy it's it's a rather kind of supportive rather than active guiding through the experience is that right mm, yeah it's, it's definitely trying to stand out of the way um yeah and letting the medicine and the person hopefully you know we, we talk about them finding that inner healer and um i suppose there's very much that sense of wanting to hand over to the participant who's maybe felt disempowered felt like they're they're powerless in their life to to have an experience where where they're really interacting with it and that they're they're bringing home um insights or feelings that are really relevant to them um so yeah i think as opposed to traditional psychiatry we're trying to step away from being the expert and just kind of provide that warm presence you know obviously having an, an understanding of someone's psychology helps us to you know know when maybe we might need to move towards them a little bit more or give them a little bit more support if they're struggling but on the whole we try to try to give give them a wide berth and, and let them figure it out for themselves because we know that's far more powerful than me telling someone what they should do with their lives